Okay, hello, we're going to look at, be looking at uh, using Laplace transforms to solve second order differential equations. So, this bit has got a lot of words, so what I'm doing is I'm just, I've written it out first so that hopefully we can talk through it. So, we can find the particular solution to a differential equation if the initial conditions are given. We know that from outcome 1. Now, you cannot find the general solution to a differential equation using Laplace transforms. It's impossible, so don't try it. So, remember, if you get two initial conditions, y0 and y dash 0. Remember, that means when x equals 0, y equals whatever, and that means when x equals 0, dy by dt equals whatever. So, for example, I've put a couple here. y of 0 means when x equals 0, y equals 4. And y dash 0 means when x equals 0 to y by dt equals 7. Okay, so if you've got two initial conditions, say 4 and 7 here. Then our two formulas we need. If we Laplace transform the first derivative, it becomes s times the Laplace transform of y take away that first initial condition. So in this case I'd put 4 in a place of that. Okay? which can also be written as, and the way I prefer it is, the Laplace transform of dy by dt is s multiplied by the Laplace transform of y take away your first initial condition. So again, you just put 4 in there. So that would help us at any point we see dy by dt, but we know in a second order differential equation, we'll get d squared y by dt squared as well. So. The Laplace transform of y double dashed t is s squared times ly take away s times y0 take away y dashed of 0. So if we were using these initial conditions for example it would be s squared ly take away 4s you put the 4 this y0 take away 7 I subtract 7. And again that's just it written the other way would have just replaced the dash dash with the d squared y by dt squared that we're used to seeing. Right, so what I've done is I've run a step by step method of how to do this. So, step one, we're going to Laplace transform both sides over differential equation. Step two, we're going to substitute in the initial conditions. So, just like I did there for the 4 and the 7. Now we're going to take all the ly terms to the left hand side and isolate them. So what that means is all your ly terms will be on the left hand side and anything that doesn't have an ly term I'll move over to the equal side over the equal sign onto the right hand side. Then we're going to simplify the right hand side by either factorising the bottom which means using partial fractions or completing the square in the bottom which is the first shift theorem. Now remember as we saw in the previous stuff on inverse Laplace transforms, sometimes it can be both. So look out for that. And then step five, we find the inverse transform. So the Laplace transform both sides, substituting the initial conditions. You take all your ly terms over to the left hand side, everything else over to the right hand side, and then you effectively do what we've been doing in the previous section of the course, inverse Laplace transforms. Okay, so let's look at the first example. So that is, find the particular solution to the differential equation d squared y by dt squared, take away 6 dy by dt, plus 5 y equals 0. And we've got when y0 equals 1, eh, sorry, when x equals 0, y equals 1, when x equals 0, y dash to 0 equals 3. That's it. Okay. So, first of all, I need to find the Laplace transform. d squared y by dt squared. That pen's not really showing up. Then I need to find 6 times the Laplace transform of dy by dt plus 5 times the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of 0. 
Now remember from that outcome one that I keep talking about, if your uh, right hand side of your differential equation is zero, it's one of those homogeneous differential equations. Okay, so that's homogeneous just now, which was kind of one of the easier ones when we looked at them. But anyway, right. So, I go to my formula sheet. I have to throw them out. So the first thing I've got to do is for a partial transform d squared y by dt squared. So that's us here. It's going to be a squared ly. Take away s times your first initial condition. Take away your second initial condition. So I'm just going to put that in a bracket. Try and make it easier for us. So it's going to be a squared ly. Take away s times our first initial condition, which is 1, take away our second initial condition, which is negative 3. Take away 6 times the Laplace transform of dy by dt. So I go to my formula sheet. The Laplace transform of dy by dt is SLY take away y0. So it's going to be SLY take away whatever our first initial condition is, which is 1. Now this is the bit we're going to have to watch. Try and make your fives look totally different from your s's so I would make them double the size normally. Or find some way of doing it yourself. Right, so that's the first two steps. I've Laplace transform both sides and then I've substituted in my 1 and my negative 3 to the correct point. And now I'm just going to simplify this. s squared ly Take away s plus 3, take away 6, s and y plus 6, plus 5, and y equals 0. So I just multiplied out the brackets and simplified right. Now what I want to do is write all my terms with ly at the front. Again, doing everything I can to try and make my 8 and 5 look different. So take away s and then 3 plus 6 is 9. Okay. Then what we do is we take anything that doesn't have any y in it over to the other side. Now I'm just doing this one step at a time. As we go on, you guys might be able to do more than one step at a time. But, you know, I always say maths is easy if you do one thing at a time. It becomes difficult when you try and do too much at once. Right, so common factor of ly. I just take ly of everything there, and then I'm just going to move that over and divide by it. Again, turn my five look different. Right. So there we go. Now, remembering the solution to a differential equation pretty much every time is y equals something. So. All I now need to do is find the inverse Laplace transform of both sides, but I can't find the inverse Laplace transform of something that looks like that straight away. Because if I look at my Laplace transform sheet, we all know there's no there's none of these Laplace inverse transforms have got three terms. Or none of these transforms have got three terms in a plot. So we know it's either factorizing or completing the square. So Let's have a look at it. So let's just ignore the fact it's a Laplace transform and just look at it as a partial fractions or completing the square question. Wow, oh, why have I done that? Sorry. So take away. Go. 
flips up. So, you want to try and see if you can factorise the bottom. So that's ET. So common factor, difference of two squares, trinomial. So is there a common factor? Well, that's not an S, remember, that's a 5. So no. It's three terms, it's not a difference of two squares, so it must be a trinomial. And all of these will be a trinomial, pretty much. Sometimes there might be a common factor of S in there, if it's a cubed or something like that. But Right. So we're adding to make negative 6. And multiplying to make plus 5. So they're both positive, both negative, and it's either 1 times 5 or 1 times 5. So negative 1 and negative 5. Okay, so it can be factorised. So we know as soon as it can be factorised, it's time to use partial fractions. Now, the nice thing about this is, I've got two brackets, and they're both different. So that's just the normal, straightforward partial fractions. I don't need to worry about any of that. And again, I'm going to try and make that five look different. Sometimes going over it twice just makes it look so different to the S. Sometimes it makes it look like you've made a mistake, but hey, I think it makes it a bit clearer. So A for S to equal 1 plus B over S to equal 1. Like that. Okay. So partial fractions. So now we, we multiply everything through by the bottom of the equation, like we always do with partial fractions. Like that. So next bit. So we then choose the two values of s and make a bracket zero. And here we go is another five again, but right. So when s equals five, that'll make that bracket zero. So that'll sort so these things out. So five take away nine is negative four. Equals well that bracket will be zero. So it'll be zero plus um, b. Five take away one. Uh, five take away one. So negative four equals four b. So b equals negative one. The first part of my partial fraction. Okay, same thing again, and then choose a value which makes the other bracket zero, which will be one. Because if you substitute 1 into there, that will make that bracket 0. So 1 take away 9 is negative 8 equals 8 of 1 take away 5 plus 0. Because that bit just becomes 0. So negative 8 equals negative 4 a. A equals 2. There we go. Right, so let's go back to our partial fractions. Okay. So, let's take away 9 over, let's take away 1, let's take away 5 can be written as 2 over s take away 1 take away 1 over s take away 5. Right, so that means that our Laplace transform of y 
as two over let's take away one subtract one over let's take away five right so now that means I've got this is where I've done my I've Laplace transformed I've substituted in my initial conditions I've isolated my LY I've then factorised and used partial fractions and I need to work out Y so I need to work to the inverse Laplace transform of everything right, and remember the easy way to do that is to take that 2 out Now that's just going to give me y because that was the whole point of this exercise. Now I go to my Laplace transform table and one o and if I've got s take away something or s plus something on the bottom and that's that, it's always e to the power of kt. And remember that just changes from positive to negative or negative to positive the number of. So that's going to be two e to the power of t. Take away one e or just e to the power of five t. Okay, let's do a second example of that. Find the particular solution. So I need mana. So the differential equation is going to be d squared y by dt squared. Subtract 3 dy by dt plus 2y equals e to the power of 3t. And you're given initial conditions, and that is y0 equals 1 and y dash 0 equals zero. So I've now got everything I need in order to solve this. So I'm going to Laplace transform both sides first of all. So it's Laplace transform squared y by dt squared. Subtract three times the Laplace transform dy by dt plus 2 times the Laplace transform y equals the Laplace transform of e to the power of 3t. Now notice this is non homogeneous or non homogeneous. So it Basically because we've got a function on this side or a term on that side, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. But hopefully not massively more difficult. We shall see as we go along. Okay, so first thing we do is this bit here becomes s squared ly. S times 1. Take away zero. Subtract three times S L Y. Take away one. Plus two times the Laplace transform Y equals and I go to my Laplace transform table. Plus and the Laplace transform e to the power of three t is going to be one over S take away. Right. 
and hopefully it's not going to be any fives in this, but there might be. So let's simplify out the whole equation. So a squared ly. Equate s, equate three s l y plus three plus two l y equals one over s equate three. Okay, so now we take all our ly's to this side. I'll just take out a common factor as I do it. So ly's of the s squared take with the s plus 2, and I've got negative s plus 3 outside. So that's me just doing two steps and one from before. Okay, now I'm going to move this across. So I'm left with that thing there. Now remember, if you move an, a, a neg, a, subtract across, it becomes an add. And add across it becomes a, sub, a subtract, so you've got to watch that, right? So nothing cancels off there. Right now, what I want to do is make this one fraction. Right now, you'll see in books sometimes they, they leave it as two separate terms. I find it easier to make it one term because it means you've only got to do partial fractions once rather than partial fractions twice. But as I said, each their own, I find this a lot easier. So I want to make this one fraction, right? This whole thing one fraction. So we've got one for s take away three. Now in order to add frac things to make them the same, they all need to have the same denominator, right? So I need this to say s take away three on the bottom. Okay? Just now there's a one on the bottom. So the only way I can I can do that is to multiply both the top and bottom. Let's take away three. Like that. So that means I'm going to get let's take away three squared over let's take away three. So what I've done there is, I've just added these two fractions together. So the bottom bits are the same, so you can just add the top bits. Okay. Right. So then, I move this part underneath. It's a multiply, that's multiplying your ly. So I move that down and it becomes a divide. Again, you can write it first, you can write it second, it does make a difference. Okay, now I want to try and make this as simple as I can um, before I move on to the next stage. So, what I need to do is I know I need to try and factorise the bottom, but I kind of need to deal with the top as well. Okay, so I'll multiply out that bracket at the top because we always want to factorise the bottom, is uh, factorise the bottom and make the top as simple as possible. So that's going to be. I 
want to try and factorise that. So a m so plus sorry negative three plus two so negative one and negative two. So that's what I've got at the moment. So now I'm going to multiply it out on my brackets. So s times s is s squared, s times negative 3 is negative 3s, three another negative 3s will make negative 6s, s plus 9 plus 1, but that's just the same. So that y is s squared. S squared take with six S plus ten all over S take with one S take with two S take with three. And if you really wanted you could check and see if the top now factorizes, but it doesn't. Right. So I've now got this thing here. It's been factorized. So now I need to do partial fractions. A over S take with 1 plus B over S take with 2 plus C over S take with 3. So that's going to give me S squared T with 6S plus 10. So I'm multiplying everything through by the bottom, just like I normally would with partial fractions. Remember, it's normal partial fractions because they're all different brackets. Okay, so just multiply through by that bottom. A whole bottom bit there. Remember, the way of working it out or doing it quickly is just go right. What's not on the bottom? What's in, what's on the bottom here that's in here? Well, s take away one. So I write the rest of it next to it. One way of looking at it, right? So then I need to try and make bracket zero. So I can make that bracket zero by saying, let's look when s is two. So two squared take away six times two. Plus 10 equals 0 plus b of 2 take away 1, 2 take away 3, plus that's got that same bracket in it, so that's going to give me 0. So 4 take away 12, negative 8, plus so So 4 take away 12 is negative 8 plus 10 is 2. 1 to negative 1 is negative 1, so that's equal to negative b. Which tells me that b is negative 2. There we go, first one done. So I need a, b and c, so I need to work out another one. So the next bracket makes 0, is that one there? This is just 3. So, 3 squared take away 6 times 3 plus 10 equals 0 plus 0 plus c 3 take away 1 3 take away 2 
Okay. So nine over eighteen plus ten equals C of two times one. So nine times eighteen is a negative nine plus ten is one. That will meet C as a half. And I'll look at my equation again in the last bracket I can make zero is that that one there. That's when S equals one. So one squared two plus six times one. Then equals eight one take away two one take away three plus zero plus zero. So one take away six plus ten equals negative two. That's five. That's two A. You really get it right, that's round the right way this time. So A is five over two. So that means my partial fractions S squared S plus 10 5 over 2 is take away 1 plus so take away I'll be take away 2 over is take away 2 plus 1 over 2 is taking three from a partial fractions. Again, try and make the fives go them in double. Because well enough we have ended up with a five again. Seems to happen in every single one of these questions, right? So that means LY which was this function here is actually this thing here. Five over two Take away one. Take away two over. Let's take away two. Plus one over two. Let's take away three. So I need to then. I want to know what y is. So I need to inverse the plus transform. And this one here, I'm just going to take a half out. So that's what I've got there. So y equals, so I go to my last transform table, which always seems to be missing whenever I need it. I'll get it this here. So again, all of these ones look like that, so it's just exponential for all of them. So it's 5 over 2, um, e to the power in uh, t, take away 2, e to the power of 2t, plus a half, e to the power of 3t. And that's the solution to your differential equation, done, sorted.
Right. Let's look at one last example because I want to do as many examples as pos as I can possibly do today. Because they, all that happens is the same process over and over again. But obviously, what's going to happen is you're going to get complete the square. You're going to get the first shift theorem. You're going to get um, repeated linear factors and irreducible quadratic factors and all that stuff. Um, if I give you a question on this though, to do in an assignment, it's going to be a standard example though right it's not going to have loads of different things in it but i want you to be able to do that so we're going to focus on that just now right you had a question like this i'd be i could give you an assignment one that's got um an irreducible quadratic partial fraction thing and i probably wouldn't give you but it could easily come up when you go to uni etc so example three Find the particular solution. T squared y by the t squared plus five dy by dt plus six y equals e to the power of negative two t. And I'll just say y zero equals one and y dash to zero. So there we go, that's all the information I need to then find the solution to this differential equation. Okay. So I need to Laplace transform both sides. So we go to the dreaded five again. Hopefully that's not the pen running out. But, right, so this bit here is going to be a squared y take away 1 plus 1 plus 5 s y take away 1 plus 6 times the last transform of y equals 1 over s plus 2. So I'm substituting in, so that's my formula for d, the Laplace transform of d squared y by dt squared. So I've substituted in the 1 and a negative 1. So take away negative 1 becomes plus 1. I've then used the formula for dy by dt, which is s l y. Take away your first initial condition, which is just 1. 6 l y stays as it is. And I've got 1 over s plus 2 comes from the Laplace transform table. Again, I'm going to make 5 look as different as I possibly can. And as you can see, it's going to end up in a nightmare here because you've got the two next to each other. Anyway, right. So, a squared and a y. Oops, sorry, I've missed out an s there. So, a squared and y, take away s plus 1 plus 5 s. Y take away five plus six L Y equals one over S plus two. Right, so let's get all of our LYs into this side. That's s squared plus 5 s plus 6. Now watching, see that thing in your bracket? It should always look like the first three terms of your differential equation. Just as a wee check to make sure that you're right. Take away s, take away 4 equals 1 over s plus 2.
and I'm going to move these over, so that's going to become plus s plus 4. So now turn the right hand side into 1 fraction. So I need to make that have s plus 2 on it as well. So that means I need to multiply the top and the bottom by s plus 2. I'm going to start that with there. It's very similar to what I ended up with in the last question. Okay, so remember what you always want to do is you want to make the top of the fraction as simple as possible and make the bottom of the fraction as factorised as possible. Right, you want to factorise the bottom if you can. So I'm going to move. So I'll multiply this out first. So s squared plus 2s plus 4s plus 8 plus 1 over s squared plus 5s plus 6 multiplied by s plus 2 ok then collect like terms in the top try and factorise that term if I can. So so that's two and three. Right. Now there is a quicker way to do this question from here, but it, I don't want I'm not going to go through it until the end because I just want to show you the same process for all these questions. Hopefully a couple of you might have spotted already what it is, but I'm going to continue with the example as is just now. So I then take this out. And I'm going to do partial fractions with it. Right, but I can't do partial fractions yet because remember I've got a repeated bracket. So I need to rewrite this as. Remember that means that our partial fractions are squared. Okay, so because you've got that repeated bracket, which means it's got a square on it, we have two partial fractions for that bit there. And we've got one partial fraction for this bit here. Okay, let's continue. Hopefully, my pen's not going to run out. Do the exact same thing as normal. S squared plus 6s plus 9 equals multiply everything by the bottom. So that's going to be a s plus 2 squared plus b a s plus 2 s plus 3 plus c 
is plus V, just like that there. Right, so we need to choose values and make the bracket zero. So the first one when s equals negative two. Negative two squared is four. Take away twelve plus nine equals C. So that means that C equals four and negative eight C equals one. Right. Next one, and s is equal to 3. 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 9 equals 3 of negative 3 plus 2 squared plus 0 plus 0. Right, so negative 3 squared is 9, take away 18 plus 9 equals and negative one squared. So zero equals a times one. That tells me a is zero. So a equals zero and c equals one. Now that a being equal to zero is actually important because if people spotted that that whole thing I was talking about earlier, it was obviously going to be zero. But again, I'll show you what I mean by that at the end. Right, I'd rather just went through the method. Now, when we get to partial fractions, I've got no more brackets I can make zero, because I've used all of the brackets I can. So remember what happens in this case. We've only got one letter left to find, so that means you select S to be equal to zero. Or you can choose any value of S you've not used. But I always use zero, if I haven't used it already. So, 9 equals A, 0 plus 2 squared b, 0 plus 2, 0 plus 3, plus c, 0 plus 9 is 4a plus 6b plus 3c. Now we already know a is equal to 0 and c is equal to 1, so let's substitute these in. So 9 equals 0 plus 6b plus 3. So 9 equals 6b plus 3. So 6 equals 6b. That tells me b is equal to 1. So squared plus 6s plus 9 all over s plus 2 squared s plus 3 can be written as a which is 0 so 0 over s plus 3 plus 1 over s plus 2 plus 1 over is plus 2 squared.
Okay, now we know from the inverse Laplace transform stuff that we did last week that if I've got a repeated linear factor and I've done partial fractions, we're going to have to use the first shift theorem, but we'll get to that, right? So let's just simplify that. So that's the Laplace transform of y, because that was my function that I got down to. So that's, that's to zero. So that's one over s plus two plus one over s plus two squared. Right now, so I need to find the inverse transform. Right, that's that's easy. That just looks exactly like one of the ones that's on the, for the formula sheet. So you can do that no bother. Now this one here isn't because you've got the s plus two in the bracket because of that repeated factor on the bottom. Now we can make it look like one of the Laplace transforms from the table by using the first shift theorem. So the first thing you do is, you look at your transforms, right? I'm looking for s plus, or s take away something on the bottom, squared, right? So s plus something, or s take away something in a bracket squared. None of these look like that. It's not that, it's not that, because those have got squares in them, inside the bracket. So I've got no Laplace transform that covers that. And these two are totally different. Because remember, a squared and outside the bracket is totally different from a squared inside like that. So, y equals, I'm just going to leave this alone just now. Now what I want to happen is, I want that to look like that. Because if that looks like that, I can get, I can find the Laplace transform easily. It's just a top. It's just a second top Laplace transform, right? So if I let s plus two in this fraction become s, right? So that bit there gives me e to the power of negative two t plus this bit here gives me e to the power of uh, negative two t. That bit inside the bracket gives me t. So s plus 2 goes to s. What am I thinking? But I know that's the first shift theorem, and that first shift theorem means. Like that. Because remember, we just change that from a positive to a negative. And it just becomes like that. So you could write it like that, or you could take out the common factor. Like 